I miss my What's in my mind But I've got to open my eyes It's getting so cloudy I'm so confused I've been amused I can't stand. 
that I was anything I wanted to be If I lost my mind I'd probably laugh life because It's not so funny anymore What a day for me Feels so strange I don't know what time or day it is What a trip for me I was anything I wanted to be I thought I knew everything But then I wonder if it's the right thing No matter what it was There'll be more What a day Then I wonder if it's the right thing No matter what it was There'll be more What a day for me What a day for me Say hello to everyone that you have never known 
There's a cry in the air, I'll catch you as before, I am the dragonfly hunter. And there again is the circle, there again is the circle, the effort, see, the complete effort to be beautiful. And being beautiful, well the whole of anything is supposed to be silently understood, only if it is the effort, not the complete thing, but the effort. The effort is the beauty. The effort. How long is waiting? Blue morning glories. And that morning, or that moment, when it didn't really matter to live or die. It really didn't matter to live or die. That suspended animation. The suspended animation of being. That is true perfection. Coin on a plate, bird in a cage, a summer festival. And every man becomes free within the bounds of his own shackles. The real freedom, the true freedom, is concept. Keeper of their own, basis of life, you are yawning cat. The effort to be me. Oh, what an effort, what an effort. 
the effort to be me, the quest, the curiosity, and there again, the perfection of effort, the perfection of effort. Descending down the road, I'll bring you up, though you may not know. And as she walked, she became a part of the divine canvas upon which the immortal hand of God painted his seasonal masterpiece to beautify his domain. She had worn well her garment of flesh of 23 years, for it was yet tender and ripe, as if still holding the perfume dampness of a mother's womb. Happy chattering, for turn and melting into mist. It's but a vapor, truly a vapor. The dream, the quest for reality, the taut desperation, the quest for reality. Coin on a plate, a bird in a cage, a summer festival. During New Year's, I think it's one of the biggest day. They carry on for two, three days. And we eat lots of different kinds of foods, such as specially prepared rice cakes, bean curds, red carp, rice wine, lotus roots, red caviar. And this is a pretty food, you know, and it's all decorated. And sushi, sashimi. And it's such an artistic thing they go through just to prepare one dish. It was one of the exciting, one of the exciting days. Because uh, you play many games, such as you fly kites, play cards, you get gifts, and you see dragon dances. And my parents would take us to a friend's house and pay greeting to them, such as Happy New Year. And uh, you hand them a token of money or present. And you go around the whole day almost paying visits to many people. I think it's nice. Keeper of their own basis of life. You old yawning cat. In Japan, people we go fishing for a two-inch fish with a long uh, ten-foot bamboo pole. 10 to 15 feet bamboo pole just to catch this two inch fish but they they enjoy this doing this more than catching the bigger fish because this little fish with this thin long bamboo pole it gave you more fight than any other fish did in a, in a, in a weird it's in a smaller way but like you know how you could become smaller and have just as much fun and th that this is what they did. And this is what they always do. <laughs> Catch this two inch fish. <laughs> There's a cry in the air. I'll catch you as before. Thank you. 
seedlings into the soil one by one with their feet in this muddy water and I, and I watch these people go down the flowers and watch the slow progress of them and it's so beautiful just the way they look exclaiming and so happy about was so much a part of the dog that there was a certain tolerance, a certain patient, gentle tolerance on the part of the dog that allowed the dog to sit and wait until I had exhausted this exhilaration. He wanted to eat it after he dried up because I suppose it tastes good. And I watched this thing move for around three, four hours in amazement <laughs> that I kept on moving. Did you ever have a, a pregnant dog? And how far removed we are from that reality, from that true reality. I remember too taking blades of grass and not being so fascinated by the grass itself or the blade of grass but the fact that I could actually touch I could touch and I knew that I was touching the blade of grass and then I took 
took my fingers and I rubbed them across the grass. And it, again, it wasn't the grass that so excited me, but the fact that I could touch, touch and smell and see. And that too is the miracle of reality. And I would look again at my fingertips and I would rub the thumb against the other finger. Perhaps words don't really express it, but I would think and sometimes aloud I would say, I can touch, I can touch, I can touch. And then I would look and I would say, I can see, I can see, I can see. All the miracle of reality. And then, I guess the most exciting part, the most exciting circumstance, was when I found out I could love. I could love, I could feel love. And that became the most beautiful miracle of reality. And it's probably the miracle that I'll never be able to quite absorb or ever become used to. And perhaps because love is the true, most complete miracle of reality. Perhaps it's the lost chord that we always speak of or feel the absence of and what we're constantly in pursuit of. It is always see that love feeling perhaps the true circumstance of communication because if I feel sufficiently and if I feel with honesty my honesty then I am wise in reacting to that. And everything from it is wisdom. It has to be. But true wisdom. With a child. Why did you do that? I just felt like it, mommy. I just felt like it. And so with love, it's like the, the mother that embraces all and everything and makes everything feel so secure and without it there's so much insecurity and even now as I think about it about discovering love even now you try to drink of it and the thirst goes on and on Japan. I didn't hear about the atom bombs so much until they started testing in the Bikini Islands once again. And uh, the fishermen who were fishing for uh, tuna nearby the islands. And uh, all of a sudden there was white flakes like falling like snow everywhere on, around the boat and everything. And uh, the fishermen, they didn't know what it was and they thought it was snow. So uh, they, they grabbed the snow and they would eat some as, as water because it tastes good and everything. After a few days, they started losing hair, skin started peeling, and many died. And the, and the tunas were also uh, poisonous. And it has killed many people in Japan. That's when it really hit me about the atom bomb. Because uh, the first atom bomb I was in, Born. and the, uh, the horror of it, although I've seen in films and read about them, I was not 
born, or I was not grown enough to read about it. One of my friends I met here has, t- has told me about he was a uh, hundred miles away when the atom bomb was dropped in Hiroshima. And he was walking home from school, and all of a sudden, everybody around him started to bleed f- from their noses, including him. And he didn't even know what happened until later on, you know, that it was Adam Barn. You ever hunt dragonflies? Many times. <laughs> don't, you think, again. <laughs> don't you think? Then you think hunting dragonflies? It's like hunting for something else. Don't you think that is the curiosity that motivates the pursuit of the dragonfly? I guess so. To me, it always meant like the pursuit of beauty, the pursuit of an ideal. Chasing butterflies. I think our life pattern is like that. We chase beautiful things. And they're ever so elusive. We reach out. You remember as kids, we would grab the butterfly, examine it so completely. And even that wasn't enough. That didn't satisfy. And we went to sleep at night, woke up the next morning, and we were in pursuit of it again. The appetite was never satisfied. like a, an active waiting, because even while we wait, we still, in a sense, reach out, perhaps with the mind, that which we don't reach out for, with the hand, we seem to reach out for the mind, so maybe it's a sort of active waiting, and as you said, Dreams. 
and fish. And they always sleep in that place that was before. But then, after a while, we would be making a place you can go next. In school, we went to many picnics. And one time, we went to see the Buddha. The great big, big Buddha. Where, where one person could climb into the nostril of the Buddha. The whole surroundings consists of pagodas, temples, thousands of uh, statues of uh, eight-handed Buddhas. A mysterious sort of religious feeling and aroma. I could still feel this. I passed by Mount Fuji many times because Mount Fuji um, you could see from almost anywhere in Tokyo. And it's top, it's capped with the snow. And it looks like a sort of like mountain of ice cream. Right? だんだんだんだんその言葉
がやかましくなく非常に自然に自分が耳に聞こえてくるものですからなんとなく口からこう同じ言葉が出て口ずさむようなことになってしまいました。